am Dr. Nidhi Khare. Students, welcome to the series Organizational Structure. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss and understand span of control. Now, span of control can also be named as span of management, span of authority, span of responsibility, and span of supervision. So, how many employees can a manager efficiently and effectively manage? Now, this question of span of control is important because to a large degree, it determines the number of levels and managers an organization needs. All things being equal, the wider or larger the span, the more efficient the organization. Now, as you can see here, an example can explain this. Assume that we have two organizations both of which have 64 employees. As this exhibit shows, if one organization has a uniform span of 4 and the other a span of 8, the wider span will have one fewer level and approximately 12 fewer managers. If the average manager made $50,000 a year, the organization with the wider span would save more than six lakhs dollar a year in management salaries alone. Obviously, wider spans are more efficient in terms of the cost. Now, however, at some point, wider spans reduce effectiveness. When the span becomes too large, employee performance can suffer because managers may no longer have the time to provide the necessary leadership and support. The top performing manufacturing plants have up to 40 production workers per supervisor. In a large call center, the number can be as high as 50 customer service representatives per supervisor. Now let's have a today's view or rather contemporary view. The contemporary view of span of control recognizes that many factors influence the appropriate number of employees a manager can efficiently and effectively manage. These factors include the skills and abilities of the manager and the employees and the characteristics of the work being done. For example, the more training and experience employees have, the less direct supervision they need. Therefore, managers with well-trained and experienced employees can function quite well with a wider span. Other contingency variables that determine the appropriate span include similarity of employee tasks, the complexity of those tasks, the physical proximity of subordinates, the degree to which standardized procedures are in place, the sophistication of the organization's information system, the strength of the organization's culture, and the preferred style of the manager. Wider spans of control are also possible due to technology. It is easier for managers and their subordinates to communicate with each other, and there is often more information readily available to help employees perform their jobs. Coming to the definition of span of control. The span of control refers to number of employees that directly report to a single manager. Span of control determines the structure of an organization. For example, a narrow span of control results in hierarchical organization while Broad span of control leads to flat structure. In subsequent lecture, I'm going to take the types of organizations like flat, tall, wide in detail. Now coming to the factors influencing span of control. Environmental stability. When the external environment is more stable than dynamic, more employees can be supervised by a single manager. Stable environment is less demanding and reduces the need for a quick response, thereby provide more flexibility in time and schedules. 
nature of work, routine jobs, tasks that require limited skills or are focused require only occasional management decision and coaching, thus can have wider span of control. On the other hand, the tasks that are inherently complicated, loosely defined and require frequent decision making would require narrow span of control. Next, experience level. When the average job related experience of employees is high, they require little training or direction and the tasks can be easily delegated. Under such situations, span of control of managers can be increased. And last, budget constraints. When an organization is facing financial hardship or is downsizing, it needs to increase the span of control. On the contrary, when an organization gets more investment, it tends to reduce the span and inflate its management. Now let's discuss the methods to maximize the span of control. Information technology. Use of efficient communication tools and other decision support systems can reduce the overall relationship complexity, thereby encouraging managers to supervise more subordinates. More training. Investing in training the employees for the current job skills and also future skills makes them more independent. Constantly involving the employees in various trainings not only increases the collective intelligence within the organization, but also results in readily available resource pool in-house. Work design. If the tasks are designed to be independent, loosely coupled with few interdependencies and probable conflicts, the relationship complexity can be reduced. Now, how do we control the size? We need to identify and correct units with unbalanced or skewed ratios between supervisors and subordinates. And we need to watch for narrowing of span of control over period of time. We need to take corrective actions that might include restructuring, training or downsizing. So this is all about span of control today. This was an introductory lecture. The trend in recent years has been towards larger span of control, which are consistent with managers efforts to reduce costs, to speed of decision making, to increase flexibility, to get closer to customers and to empower employees. However, to ensure that performance does not suffer because of these wider spans, organizations are investing heavily in employee training. Managers recognize that they can handle a wider span when employees know their jobs well or can turn to co-workers if they have questions. In the next lecture, I am going to discuss span of control in a little more detail so as to give you a better understanding of the topic. Thank you.